Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an AI that will predict the player's position. So this is the project you'll have at the end of this tutorial. What I'm going to do is move around and you can see if I go from right to left, it hits you pretty much every time. I change um, up here. It's, I don't think it's perfect, uh, it's got lots of improvements to do on it, but this is how to do it, not the best way of doing it. So let's get into it. So you want to have a new project. I've put in these graphics that I drew quite a while ago, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a new scene, we're going to call this main. We're going to save the main as such, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it, um, a new empty scene, I'm going to make a no 2D, we're going to call this here. We'll add a sprite, let's put the man in the sprite. Um, and we're going to have, that's about it, yep that's right, I'm going to save the player, do the same again, node, cause enemy, and this one's going to have a sprite, uh, we'll call this man, and to make the enemy different, we'll just go to visible, modulate, and I'll just gonna make it red. Um, <clears throat> another thing we need is add a timer. So the reason I'm using the timer is it's just going to be a shoot interval. So make sure that it's auto started and we'll have it shooting at one shoot once every second. So let's save that. Then I'm going to make another one. This is going to be um, let me just check. This is going to be uh, no 2D and it's going to be the bullet. Again, pull it, and what I'm, another thing I'm going to do is add a visibility node. So this is a visibility, the visibility notifier 2D. So what we can do with this is basic set, tell if an object is on screen or off screen. So what we're going to do is save that, and then I'm going to make a script and put in a bullet. Oops, touch a new script. Quote like this, let's move all this out of the way, we want to enable this, and what I want to do is say vada equals zero, so this is the direction of the bullet is facing, var bullet speed equals 10, and then we're going to say var move, the move direction equals vector 2, one, Zero dot rotated the global position plus equals our move direction direction times our bullet speed. So what's happening is here is every frame we're saying right which direction is the bullet facing in. Then after we know that direction, we're gonna say right, move the position based on that direction at that speed. So if we say the bullet's facing upwards, it'll go up. If it's facing down, it'll go down. And then another thing we're going to do in here is we're going to go back to the bullet. We're going to go to the visual and notify fire. And we're going to say screen exit. Double click that. Make sure bullets are selected. Connect it. So this single turn is going to say, right, have we left the screen? If we have anything we write in here, will be fired. And we want to say, well, if it's left the screen, we want to we want to delete the bullet, so we'll do that, we'll save, and that's our bullet done. So what we want to do next, I want to go to and do the player. Now, with the, oops, go back, with the player, we've, I'm just going to make it move around, we've, we've done this code like lots of times if you follow my tutorial, so I am going to copy and paste just to save some time. So we're going to attach a script, we're going to create that, what I'm going to do is go to my player over here, I'm going to copy everything, move it over, and I'm just going to walk you through this. In fact, let's get rid of that because I, I want to um, show you right from the beginning certain things. So what I wanted to uh, copy and paste was just this bit. So let's save this. Let's make a scene. Let's put the uh, a player in. So that the uh, main. As you see, oh yeah, the player is moving around. Uh, sorry, looking around. Now we press 
uh, the WSD it won't work because obviously we've got to put the keys in to be recognised. So we're going to go to the project, we're going to go to the input map, and we're going to say WASD. It's a bit of a lengthy process, bear with me. DS and D. Now we can move around. So that's pretty much what I want to do in the player. So I want to go for the movement, I mean, uh, go back to the script. So I'll just walk through this. This is going to say, right, we're going to walk at the at speed of three. We're going to say every time, every uh, 60 seconds, we want to handle the movement. And we're going to say, right, if any of this is held down, do the movement. If, you, if it's a little bit confusing, look at previous tutorials on mine, it'll explain a little bit better and quicker than I'm doing it right now. And that right at the very end, we'll just make sure the player is always look, looking at the mouse position. So what I want to do is I want to go up here and I want to add some more variables in. Now we need to add var player vol. The reason we need the player velocity is that we need to know how fast the player is moving in the direction, else we wouldn't know how to predict they I wouldn't know how to predict where to shoot the bullet. So we'll just say vector two, and we'll just say one one, it doesn't really matter, we'll just put it there or there. there. And we'll save our old player pos. And then we're gonna go down, make sure old player pos is set. It goes global position. Then we go to the processes, and then what we're gonna do is handle. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to say right. We're going to set the, we're going to check the uh, play position compared to its previous position, and that will tell you if the player's moved. And obviously, you, the variables will change, and that will give you the, the current velocity we're going at. So we're going to say old player pos equals global position. Um, um, right. I'm going to say player velocity equal global position minus old position. So we're going to say, right, what was our old position? Take that away from our current position, that gives our velocity. And then once we've done that, we then need to update the old um, position with the new one, so our next frame it will be old again. It's a little bit confusing to how I'm explaining the poker comes across okay. Save that. That's pretty much our player done. So now we want to go to the enemy. Um, I'm going to go to the time. No, I'm going to attach a script. Great. Let's move some of this up here. Clean it up a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to put in some variables of our bullet packed. Scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this uh, scene here and we're going to put in here. So to do that we're going to have to go to already. We're going to say bullet equals resource loader dot load. And then what you can do f to make this a little bit quicker is we find the bullet. You can right click on it, copy path, paste it there. So now we have a packed scene of the bullet and we can then, when the uh, enemy fires, we instigate that scene. So we're going to go to the process and we're going to say var disk equals global position distance to, oh, I forgot to do something as well, sorry about that. We're going to go back up here, we're going to say on ready var player equals get node. We need to get the players so we know its velocity so it can return that and obviously its position as well. So where was the player? It's um, root main player. Let me just make sure that's correct. That's the thing we need. Go back to main. Yes, root main player. Go back to the script. Now we, now we can say player. This. Oops. Yeah. Don't look at that. Player dot global position. Then I'm gonna go and say right look at player dot global position. So this would just look directly at the player. We don't want that. We uh, we want to now um, 
add players velocity and then add it to the look at player dot player ball. Just make sure that's right. Player ball, yeah. Then we're gonna say player ball times distance divided by ten. So what we so this is basically um, an algorithm to sort of like tr trigonometry. So I'm this value is ten. That's because our bullet velocity is going to be bullet speed is going to be at ten. So if the bullet speed changes, then you have to change the velocity speed in the enemy. Right, and then I think so to so all this is doing is it's kind of like looking in the position of where the player is going to be. And what we're going to do is instigate a bullet, and because it's and put it to our our look position, so it's going to be firing in front of the player. So to do that, we need to go to the enemy. We're going to go to the time sprite, and we're going to say on timeout. Double click again. Make sure it's on the enemy. Create, and then we're going to put it here. And we say var bullet equals bullet dot instance. So now we have a bullet as bull. And then we're going to say boulder equals rotation. So we're getting the rotation of the enemy, which will be looking in front of the player. Ball dot global. I just did this. Rotation equals rotation. Ball dot global. And we're going to say get parent our child ball. So you might be thinking, well, why are you doing the get parent? If you don't do that, if you just add the child to the enemy, when it, if the enemy was to move around, the, ch uh, the bullet would move around with the enemy. So we want we don't want to put it on. Um, let's go here a second. I'll put the enemy in the here. We don't want to put it in here because when this is moving, the bullet will move with it, so we put the bullet around about here. So let's make sure this is working. Oops, we've got an issue. I'm trying to run a pack scene there, the type pack of packed data container. Oops, that's wow. There you go. As you see, it's shooting directly at us. And if I start moving, you can see it's shooting in front of us. I mean, you can. It's really easy to to like fool. So what I'd recommend is I'd say right if you're moving a certain position for a certain amount of time, then enable the predictive. Else, if you if you're doing all this stuff, then I'd say just shoot directly at the player. So. Um, yeah, I hope that was a quick tutorial. I don't know what I'm going to do for my next one. Once again, any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.